<laughs> so much to think about. So little to do. Wait. Um, <laughs> um, cool. OK, so we got together and um, used more colors than anyone so far, I think. Um, <laughs> um, so thanks to the whole team. Um, it, could, it took a fair amount of focus. So we decided that the ECM is important, really important to study in aging for two reasons, because it's vastly understudied and it's incredibly important. And the imp importance, well, so the way, the way we measured understudied is A, intuitively, but B, also doing a, a search on PubMed um, showing that the number of papers related to ECM and aging is about 100 times fewer than, um, than related to just aging and other parts of biology. Very inexact science could be off by an order of magnitude, at least. Um, the other is it seems incredibly important. And just based on the small number of papers that, uh, that I surveyed, um, the, there are a large number of hallmarks of aging that are, seem to be impacted by ECM and a bunch of diseases um, that kill most people. Um, so that seems, that seems important. Um, and uh, we also noticed that there don't seem to be very good tools that people can access. Uh, so just taking stock, um, what, you know, what, what are some things that we could do? Um, where are we? Um, it seems like in the short term, we could uh, help people communicate. I think the aging biology community is tiny, um, and then the rest of all of biologists out there are extremely knowledgeable about the things that they're doing. Uh, and um, it's important to realize that we're pretty ignorant. Uh, and and I'm not, no offense or anything, but I mean, just like, it's just one lens to look on biology, which is huge. And so uh, getting people connected with, you know, we don't know how to measure a lot of these, these different properties of things that are breaking down in the ECM. Um, all the different AGEs, uh, et cetera, so we just need to go hang out with extracellular matrix people um, and the people who are authors on the journals and uh, the, art uh, the articles in those journals, et cetera, go to the conferences, um, and then also invite ECM specialists to come to our workshops and stuff like that. Um, one of the things that it seems like we need are tools. Um, like we don't know how to, we, we don't, we, which is basically the five people who are in that room um, today, um, don't know very well how to measure ECM properties. Um, are, is there a little device that we can insert into the skin of a mouse and decide how, uh, how old its ECM is? We don't, we don't really have that yet. Uh, can we, t can we uh, but you can imagine all kinds of devices that people in the ECM field probably have already built, like Young's modulus measuring systems and stuff. Um, can you, take out a chunk of it and just stick it in a mass spec and it'll tell you like all of the aging ECM characteristics. We don't know how to, but maybe. Um, uh, one of the, um, so ultimately we need a bunch of tools in order to test and understand what's an old ECM, what's a young ECM, what can you do to an organism to move its ECM from old to young. Just like they're just having, just, basically we decided to call that a model. Um, uh, a model is a system in which you can set up an experimental uh, uh, procedure, and then you can do interventions and and uh, find out what, f find out if your interventions are are, are doing anything, um, are helping or hurting. Um, and then ultimately, we want to be able to use that to actually make interventions that could be useful to people, including us. So, how do we do this? Um, one would be to create these events that I was talking about where ECM people can come and we can invite them and be nice to them and honor their, their great knowledge. Um, um, we can become more educated. Um, we can develop a toolbox for use by aging people of e e ECM n you know, m mechanisms and tools and diagnostics and um, and uh, so what could, we actually, what could we actually tangibly do? One, um, Alexandra was sort of generously suggesting that 
for basically just a little bit of budget, um, she would be willing to put her back into actually creating a conference slash, slash workshop kind of thing and invite some of these ECM people and aging biology people who could mix together um, and start working on some of this. Um, two, um, we could potentially do something I did at my company last term, or a term is something that happens in academia. Um, um, so for several months, we worked with this company called Biotech Connection Bay Area, BCBA. Um, we gave them 10,000 bucks, and they got six or seven grad students um, in biology at, at Stanford and UCSF and Berkeley and around the Bay Area, um, who worked all term for us, um, chasing down uh, all these mechanisms, going through lists of tissues, rating them by these metrics for rubrics that, rec rubrics that we created, um, interviewing like 20-ish uh, KOLs, which just basically means a smart person in an industry that other people respect, um, uh, and like recorded them and took notes and synthesized and wrote a whole white paper. Like a whole ton of stuff happened for 10K. Um, they didn't actually give it to them, the money. Um, they just bought pizza and Coke and space for them to hang out um, um, and funded the people in the organization to do stuff. But, uh, but it's like, I, I feel really good about it. Um, so we could fund one of those for aging in the ECM. And they would go out and find 20 ECM KOLs and interview them with like an interview sheet that we helped them design and synthesize all the data. And like um, that would probably move the whole thing forward a lot as well. Um, then there are some free things we could do, like impetus of grants and just uh, like, like glowering at Aaron with a smile on our face to say, hey, maybe add some uh, uh, some database sections to um, record any tools that people know of and, and and platforms and that kind of thing. Anyway, that's what we came up with. Um, we're we're pretty optimistic that we could make a big difference, and I. Would love to hear questions if they're time, but maybe the time is over, and so that's. Oh, okay. Do have wow, time amazing. Okay. The wow, that's very concrete. Have it. Okay. Suggestions, comments. Uh, I'm in. I'm in. I'm just. Okay. I can add that, that I'm in. <laughs> okay. Someone's in. Who else is in? You're in. Nice. <laughs> um, yeah. Is the Biotech Connection Bay Area, is that nonprofit, for-profit, who are they? It is a nonprofit group. Um, they also will convene special types of groups, this is whatever, using up these three minutes, for investors. Um, so it's a different kind of group. So the kind I convened is for, I have specific stuff I want to know about a particular type of intervention to see which sorts of tissue types I might work on and like go through this whole arc of research culminating in a, in a compendium of synthesized data over several months. But they also convene a different type of group, which is we're going to get this group of people together who's kind of interested in investing. Um, and you can throw s decks at them spontaneously um, uh, and they will just like research the, the, the pitch deck for you, um, check out, read some of the papers associated with it, give you their opinion on whether they think it's like exciting or stupid. Um, they won't rate the founders for you um, as people who can execute, but they will tell you if they think the science is sound. Um, that's who they are. Um, wow. I can intro you to the people if you want. Um, any else? Any other, Leon? The comment I think you mentioned, Fedensev, uh, mm -hmm. he has a group with device for monitoring uh, ECM. Oh, awesome. It's worth talking to them. Uh, we, we can uh, where, think where? of trying some screening in Daphnia. And there's a completely separate project I never mentioned called Stimulated Raman Imaging, which has potential to um, look at ECM in mice and human tissue. Where is Alexei physically? Is uh, he Finland. Like Finland, okay. Um, cool. Um, thank you. Alex uh, Vidinsev? So somebody should Finland. like... Oh. Alex Vidinsev is also an... Are you talking about... Vidinsev, yeah. Uh, who's in Finland, right? Is that right? Yeah. Is that is that the, that's the Alex we were talking about? Okay. Uh, yeah, Alec, uh, his name is Alexander. Alexander. He goes by Alexander. Okay, I, I never know... Um, People mention all these, there's like, somebody must have conquered a whole lot of space for 
a lot of other people to name themselves after them. But, um. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you very much. My that pleasure. was very concrete.